Well, we tried everybody. That's depressing. Right guys? Hopefully there's not a pull. It's okay, Cody. <laughs> Bring it in, Dan. Big, big hug, buddy. <laughs> Okay, we just finished up our failed terminal C-section. So the baby calf was a little too premature. His lungs were really filled with fluid. Uh, it was definitely a good call to euthanize the cow on post-mortem. She had this eroded hard palate. All right, so here's her soft palate, where her soft palate should be. And right at her hard palate, she's eroded all the way up into her nasal canals and her sinuses. So you can put your whole hand up into her sinus. Uh, she definitely needs to be euthanized, but baby just wasn't baked enough. Uh, we tried her hardest. Uh, now we're going off to do some insurance uh, claims and a meeting at the airport. All done at the airport meeting. Uh, that was with Zoetis Animal Health. They just launched a new product called Actigain, and it is a beta agonist, so something that improves feed efficiency and live weights and hot carcass weights and average daily gains. So that was supposed to be it for me today, and then I had to rush out of the meeting. Paul has a uterine prolapse he has to attend to, so now I'm going to pick up his feedlot calls. His Crazy, crazy week already. Okay, just rolled up to the post mortem pit. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven post mortems to do, and I will show you guys anything that I find that's interesting or extra special. Well, as promised, I found a rather large very liquidy abscess just behind the calf's diaphragm uh, in this animal here so here's his ribs his last ribs here's his small intestines and right in here is this giant pocket of pus there's a bunch of fibrin in here i just can't believe how how actual liquidy it is so I'll cut down drain that abscess That is a crazy internal abscess. Inside of here. So we'll try to find a point source of this infection, but man, this thing is like one, two, three, maybe like three basketballs in length. Ooh. Okay, so I found the point source of infection, and unfortunately, unfortunately it was secondary to uh, a bloat surgery that we did out here. I'm not sure if this was one that I did or not, but here you can see the skin. You can see the hole directly into the rumen. There's the rumen contents, but it also follows this fistula down here. So that fistula tracked all the way into the abdomen and that's how we got our large liquidy abscess. So that doesn't feel too nice today. Uh, what else did we have? And here is the granddaddy of them all. This lung was absolutely nasty. I dissected this out. You have no idea how many lung juices I got in my mouth trying to do this one. So 
this is a very, very advanced mycoplasma. You can see on cut cross-section, large abscesses, extremely necrotic lung, so that's normal-ish lung. And, oh man, this one completely taken over. That's a bad lung. Okay, that's it in the pit. I got one more post-mortem to do uh, on a call cow, so. 888-8-Peach, mycoplasma pneumonia. 1362 green mycoplasma pneumonia, 4417 chartreuse mycoplasma. So just driving home for my last feedlot call. On my way out, they flagged me down. They actually had a cow that had a double prolapse, a rectal and a vaginal prolapse. I did not video that. I did put it on Snapchat though. So overall, it was kind of like a mixed emotions day. The terminal C-section with the premature baby, you know, didn't go in our favor. Just too much fluid in his lungs for it to be a viable, uh, a viable calving. So, never feels nice at all. So, obviously, not every day being a cow vet goes as planned.